Hi, what's up? My name is Emma, aka Midsummer Knits, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a summer patterns recommendations video. This is a follow up to my last pattern recommendations video, which was for spring. I do want to do a quick plug for that video because I made that video not really thinking ahead and thinking about the fact that I would probably do a summer recommendations video as well. So a lot of the patterns in that video can also function as summer patterns. And so I have a number of recommendations in that video for tees, tank tops, just things that I think would work really well for summer as well. That being said, in this video, I am going to try to focus on patterns that I think would work exclusively for summer as opposed to spring, but definitely if you want to see more recommendations that I have for spring or summer, then you can check out that other video as well. I will link it in the description below. Otherwise, I'm really excited to share this video with you guys. I always really love these pattern recommendations videos because it's really fun for me to compile a list of designs that I love, whether I'm planning to knit them or not. I'm a little bit more of a slower knitter, so I can't always get to knitting every single thing that I want to for each season, but it's really fun for me to just come up with a list of my favorite patterns for a season and share them with you guys. That being said, I can only knit a limited number of things. So of all the patterns in this video, I actually don't think I've knit any of them. These are more patterns that are in my queue for the future, or I just think are really cool designs and want to recommend. And in a lot of cases, I have knit different patterns by the same designer, but not necessarily the one that I'm recommending. Again, plug for my spring patterns video because I did actually knit some of those. However, when it came to the summer patterns video, I was kind of out of recommendations that I had recently knit. So this is gonna be more of an inspiration style video where I personally haven't knit the patterns, but I'm still recommending them to you because I think they're cool designs and I think you should check them out. Without further ado, let's get into the pattern recommendations. So I am going to split up the patterns into different categories corresponding to what types of patterns they are. And just in advance, I'll tell you the categories are bralettes, tops, bottoms, slash dresses, um, children's, and other. So we're gonna go ahead and start with bralettes. I know that some people might not be interested in knitting bras or bralettes. I will have all the different categories linked as chapters in the video, and you can feel free to skip around depending on what you're interested in making. For me, I thought that bras slash bralettes were just a must-have category in this video. There aren't many garments that you can really only knit exclusively for summer, so I feel like a lot of the skimpier like bras and bralettes I would recommend for summer, just because if you are feeling a little feisty and you do just wanna wear a bra or bralette out by itself, I feel like summer is the best time to do that. So I do have a couple of recommendations for this category. The first bra slash bralette I have to recommend you guys is called the Nurture Bralette. It is by Celine Phaeton. And I've seen this bralette a few times, and I think the thing that really stands out to me about this one is the way that the cups are made. They are made with short rows, so they look like they are really supportive and can work with a large range of different sizes. When it comes to knit bras and bralettes, my suspicion is that for the most part, people with larger cup sizes are not really going to gravitate towards these because they just aren't going to provide as much support as like a store-bought wired bra would. However, this one does look like it has a pretty good amount of support. So I think if you are like a larger cup size looking for a bra or bralette pattern, this is one that I would def definitely recommend checking out. It also has really gorgeous twisted stitches going down the side, as well as the twisted stitches combining with lace at the bottom of the bralette, which I think is really gorgeous. And it additionally has the option to knit it a bit longer, so it can be more of a bralette slash tank top that you would actually want to wear out on its own. And so I just think this is a really cool design. The next bra design that I have to recommend is called Opulent Plunge by Taylor Owen. And this is a really interesting bra design in that it has these really interesting twisted cables at the top. It then sort of separates out into plain ribbing and then also has cables to create more support at the bottom of your bust. And I just think this is a really cool looking design. The name Opulent Plunge to me really does convey the way that this bra looks. It looks very expensive, very fancy, and I just love the look of the twisted cables at the top and at the bottom of the bra. I think it is a really cool look. Again, this one does appear to be size inclusive. It fits up to a 56 inch bust. And I also looked through the Ravelry projects and saw some people with like a larger bust and larger cup size making it. I think this one is a really cool design. And again, if you're looking for a knit bra, these are my two recommendations of patterns that I thought were really cool. I myself have not made a knit bra before, but if I were to make one, these two designs I think are just really cool and creative and I would definitely look into making one of these two. Our next category is tops. And before we start, I do wanna say I have a lot of designs in this category just because I feel like tops are the main thing you'd wanna make for summer, whether it's like sleeveless or short sleeve tops. 
I am the kind of person who gravitates towards knitting a lot of garments, and so specifically for summer, I do gravitate towards mostly sleeveless and short sleeve tops as the things that I'm making. This wouldn't be a Midsummer Nets video without me recommending something by Lily Kate France. Um, she is a very successful designer, and rightfully so, because her designs are absolutely amazing. I feel like she has such a wide range of designs, but I can always spot them from just the attention to detail, and also her pattern writing is really good. So the design of hers that I'm recommending in this video is called the Abydos Top. I love the look of this one. It has these stripes ranging between a lace weight, more kind of like fluffy looking yarn in the yoke of the top, as well as these more solid stripes of the main color. The solid stripes are this technique that Lily, Fr Lily Kate describes as tucks, and I just love the absolute look of the contrast and textures. I think it looks so visually interesting and the top itself looks lightweight and casual and just something that you could wear around for summer that would be just very light and comfortable. So I love this design. Lily Kate, I have so many kind things to say about her designs and she definitely has a number of other designs that would work really well for summer, but I did want to just try and limit it to one design in this video so I'm not just recommending every single Lily Kate France design, but I love this top design. I would love to make it someday. Up next we have the Ghost Whisperer, Ghost Whisperer by Park Williams. So the Ghost Whisperer is this design that's knit out of a mohair or other lace weight yarn. And so for that reason, it's going to be a little bit of a lighter design. And basically the entire top is sheer. Um, so I think this is a really cool option if you have like a cool bralette that you want to wear underneath the top or you can even just wear another like tank top underneath it. I think this is a really cool option, especially if you knit a bralette yourself that you want to wear under the top. Um, it's just a really cool way to actually show that off, as well as have an extra layer of fabric on top. I also absolutely love these puffy kind of like half sleeves that it has. It is just so feminine and cute and stylish. I love it. I also want to mention, I don't live somewhere super hot. I do imagine that wearing a mohair shirt somewhere where it gets into like the 90s or 100s in Fahrenheit, as well as somewhere that it's really humid, could be uncomfortable. So this might not be a summer piece for you so much as like a transition piece. Um, but for me, this could definitely be a summer piece because I don't live somewhere super, super hot. Up next, we have another summer open back top by Crystal Liu. This one I want to mention only goes up to a 41 and a half inch bust. So just a heads up, if you are a larger size than that, this is not gonna be size inclusive for you, unfortunately. Um, however, I wanted to include this top still because I just think it's a very creative idea. I love that the back is quite literally just an open back with a giant bow at the bottom. Again, another really cute, flirty, feminine knit, which seems to be my MO lately. Like, I just love the look of this. Um, and I feel like otherwise, it's a pretty basic top. Um, like, just seeing it from the front, it is. it looks like it's just a ribbed body and then some puff sleeves, which again, I love. But I think otherwise, the back of this top is just a really creative concept that I haven't seen done in the knitwear world too much before, so I think this is a really cool one. All right, we're about halfway through the tops. Um, next up, I have the Davenport Camisole by Samantha Swamy. Fun fact, her and I actually grew up very close to each other. We both grew up in Northern Virginia, which I think is just a really fun fact because we now are both pretty involved with the online fiber arts community. This summer top in particular is a really cool design. Um, it is a halter top, so this is another one where it's going to be somewhat open in the back. Um, essentially, like your entire top back is going to be exposed and then it will just come down and cover your lower back, which I think is a pretty cool design and obviously great for the summer. And it also has this absolutely gorgeous lace at the bottom waist part of the top. I love the texture in this one. I think that it is taking a very basic construction for a top of just a halter top and then adding in this cool bit of texture to make it a really unique handmade garment. This next one is the Pure Mesh Pullover by James N. Watts. I do want to be obnoxious and just say that James is a really cool designer. He has a lot of really interesting designs that I see and I just am blown away with how he thinks of these things, like really cool modular designs that have multiple pieces in a single in a single top where you're knitting in a bunch of different directions. I just think he's really cool and a lot of his pieces are also kind of unisex or androgynous, so I think that's really awesome. Um, the Pure Mesh Pullover is a little bit more of a simple design from him. It is just going to be an all over mesh lace design, uh, but I haven't seen this done a lot in knit. I feel like I see this more often in crochet tops, so I think it's really cool that there's a knit version of this as well. I also do want to mention that I just recently saw that James is coming out with a tan top version of this design, so that's something that I would gravitate more towards as opposed to the pullover version. I do think it would be good for summer and as like maybe a beach cover up or something, but I think 
if you're already going to have an all over like mesh top, might as well just remove the sleeves, right? I think this is just another cool design if you want to wear a tank top or a bra underneath it. And it's also unisex, so I feel like assuming someone has a bold enough style to pull this off, you can kind of make it for anyone in your life. I am tending to gravitate towards more bigger designers in this video, and I feel like that's because um, I used a lot of my kind of like indie designer cool finds in my spring patterns video. However, this is another big designer, and this designer I think is big for a very specific reason. It is Jessie Made. She has a lot of designs that are going to fit more into the summer, spring, summer kind of category. Lots of tank tops, lots of bralettes. Um, and I think she is really popular for a reason. Again, she does things that are super size inclusive. And the design that I'm recommending here, it's very much a basic piece in your wardrobe. It is the totally tank top. So this is a basic racer back tank top. And I do just want to give a quick explanation of why I'm recommending this. I feel like I tend to gravitate towards more kind of like interesting designs when it comes to patterns to recommend in these videos. However, I feel like having just like more basic designs is not a bad thing either. But I feel like it's always a good thing to just have some basic knit pieces in your wardrobe because I honestly don't have too many like basic knit pieces in my wardrobe and I do find myself reaching towards my own store pop basics as opposed to my knit pieces sometimes because I just want something simple and basic. So I definitely am making it a goal for this year next to knit a couple more basic, simple pieces that I can just reach for whenever. Specifically for this one, actually, I saw um, Tannis Fiber Arts made a scrappy striped version of this tank top, and I thought it was so cute. So I think this would be a great one to use up some yarn scraps, and it would also be a great one just if you want a little bit more of a basic addition to your wardrobe. All right, my camera died, but I'm back. Um, next up, this is the last top recommendation that I have. It is the Twisted Love Top by Unlucky Knits. This one's actually not on Ravelry. I found it from her Instagram and I just think this is a really cool design. Essentially how it works is it has this panel for the bust that is twisted in the middle. Um, and I've seen this design for some store-bought tops but I've never seen anyone attempt to do it for an actual hand knit top. And I just think it's such an interesting design. It's so, so cute. And it also has these cute, tiny little cap sleeves that just, I look at it and like my heart just soars. It just looks like such a fun design to make and to wear. And so I've been wanting to make this one for quite a while. Okay, we're finally moving on from tops. Everyone cheer. The next section is bottoms and dresses. So we're gonna start off with my first recommendation, which is the Lime Skirt by La Pole. Um, someone recommended this one to me on Instagram. I posted an Instagram question box saying, you know, what are some sa summer patterns you want to see and feel free to recommend any specific ones you like. And someone recommended this one to me and I'm really glad they did because I was really looking for like a swim cover-up sort of design um, to include in this video and this one is just perfect to me. Um, so basically it's just like a simple all over mesh skirt. Honestly, I would think that you could probably modify this design slightly to make it a dress very easily just by adding straps to it and maybe like changing some of the proportions. I think this would be very cute as a dress as well. Um, but I do love an all lower mesh moment for summer. I think it's just amazing to have as like a swim cover up. And I love that they knit theirs in like this aggressive lime green. Um, very punchy, very summery, very out there, and we love to see it. Next up, I wanted to recommend the Melodis dress by Nez Oliveira. And I have seen a couple of dress patterns floating around. And to be honest, I am not ambitious enough to knit a dress at this point in my life. But this is one that I saw that I was like, that is a really cool dress. Like if I were ambitious enough to knit a dress, I want to knit one that is something like this. What's cool about this one is that it's a reversible dress. So one side of it has a V neck and then buttons all the way down. And the other one is a scoop neck and it's pretty basic, doesn't have too much of a design. And so I already think that is really cool and sort of speaks for itself. Um, it's also tailored sizing. So it's more of a made to measure sort of pattern where you're going to have to measure certain parts of yourself to actually figure out how much to knit, how much to cast on. Um, which I think for a dress is probably good considering people tend to just have like pretty different proportions um, Maybe like their bust doesn't match their hip size like you can't really Expect that to be the same for every single person. So I think that's awesome I will say this one looks like a total beast to knit It is knit in fingering weight yarn and uses size two and a half needles. So I do think it's a big project uh, But I do want to say I think it's a cool design and if you are looking for a dress I would recommend this one uh, I'm guessing it would probably be pretty straightforward also to just shorten the dress if you want kind of like a mini dress as opposed to a midi or maxi dress, which this one appears to be. 
Um, so that could be a modification you can make if you wanted it to go a little bit faster. Okay, so last pant or bottom recommendations are the Lost Shorts by Friday Knits. And Friday Knits is another one of those designers so I just who I just see every design from and I'm like, that is incredible, iconic, amazing. And she made this Lost Tank pattern and then also did a Lost Shorts and I think a Lost Camisole pattern to go along with it. And I just love the simplicity. It's like this very simple, I think it looks like two by one rib. I don't know, it looks very clean and tailored, especially the Lost Tank. She did the, I believe, two by one rib for the entire body and then um, stockinette stitch edging that just looked very beautifully finished. And I feel like the Lost Shorts have that same kind of very thoughtfully created look put into them. Um, they have increases coming from like the center or crotch of the shorts, which I think just looks very nice. And honestly, I'm not really a very big shorts person, so I don't see myself knitting shorts anytime in the future, but just imagining having a set of a lost tank and lost shorts and being able to like wear that around the house is really cool. So I think this is a really cool design and maybe someday I'll get to it. The next category I have to show you guys is actually children's. So I did not include children's knits in my spring knitting video. I feel like I tend to be a relatively selfish knitter, so when I'm looking for patterns to make, I'm usually only really looking for designs that I myself want to make, and I do not have children, nor do I have really any children in my life, so this didn't really come to mind when I was making my spring patterns video. However, for my summer patterns video, this video is sponsored by Unit Toronto for me to share the book Making Memories, which is a children's pattern book. And first of all, I want to tell you guys, this is just an absolutely gorgeous book. When I got it in the mail, I was like absolutely blown away at the finishing of this book um, and the thought put into every piece of this book. Like I love this fabric cover and just every single photo in here. I love how well thought out it is and how you get to see these adorable children in every single knit. Um, so I definitely would recommend checking out this book if you do have children or any children in your life who you want to knit for, this is a gorgeous book. However, I am recommending two specific patterns from this book for my summer children's pattern recommendations today. The first one is the Oscar vest. So this is just an absolutely adorable vest that has this broken rib looking texture. And Claudia in the description mentions that Oscar was inspired by my son. Um, he always wanted his arms as uninhibited as possible because he was very energetic and adventurous, which again, I don't have children of my own and I'm quite far from having children of my own, but I feel like when it comes to knitting things for your children, you definitely want to knit things that are as functional as possible. So I definitely think that making a vest where your children's arms are not gonna be constrained is a great idea. And I also love the finishing of the ribbing on the armholes. It just makes it look very clean and very tailored and you guys know that's something I'm into. And the second summer pattern I'm going to recommend from this book is called the Pescucha Tee. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, but this one I absolutely love. It is this gorgeous feral design on the yoke of the tee that has several different colors. There's two variations shown in the book. It is a sort of pink one and then a purple one and I love both of them. Um, I think this is just a really nice way to make a knit for your child a little bit more fun, a little bit more interesting and stylish. Um, without taking away functionality because obviously that's going to be really important when you're looking to knit for your child. Um, but it also has these really cute puff looking sleeves and I just love that Claudia took the concept of doing a fair aisle sweater which I feel like is very common in the knitting world and decided to do a tee instead. I just think that's a really fun little twist on kind of like a common design element that's in a lot of knitted garments and I just think this is absolutely adorable. Again, I have loved looking through this book. There's so many cool designs in here beyond what I just shared with you guys and I would definitely recommend you check this book out if you have any children in your life and have any urge to knit for them. There are just so many cool designs in here that span a variety of different seasons, different moods, and I really think that it's going to have something that you would like if you have children or have children in your life. Last thing I want to mention about making memories is that there's actually a cowl or a knit along for one of the designs in this book, the cathedral sweater. And this design has both a children's and an adult's version. It has this beautiful lace twisted stitch pattern on the yoke, which I absolutely love. You guys know that twist stitches are one of my absolute favorite design elements. I think it just adds so much definition to whatever the stitch pattern is. So I absolutely love this design and that cowl is taking place from June 9th, so it already started until the end of July. However, it's definitely not too late to start and I will link all of the information below 
about this book, about the cowl, anything you might want to know about it. And you should definitely check out Making Memories and the Cathedral's Cowl. Thank you again to Unit Toronto for sponsoring this video. Otherwise, I just have a few more pattern recommendations for you guys. And these are all patterns that I am putting into an other category because none of these really fit into a single category, um, but it's mostly more accessories and things. So the first one is I want to recommend knitting scrunchies. I feel like this is just a fun, quick knit for the summer and I feel like summer is going to be the most common time that you're gonna to wanna to put your hair up. So it's a great way to add a little knit accessory to your outfit without actually having to wear anything kind of hot and scratchy and hand knit during the summer. There are plenty of scrunchie patterns out there, but I will recommend the Soho Scrunchie by Tori Yu. This is a free pattern and I feel like making scrunchies is just a pretty fun process. It usually only takes a couple of hours and it's just a fun way to add a little knit accessory to your summer outfits. Um, and also a great way to use up some extra yarn. Next up, I know I promised not to give you guys too many Lily Kate France pattern recommendations, but I saw she recently released this pattern and I've been dying to make it ever since. It is the Boulevard bag. And the thing that I often don't love about knit bags is that they are usually not super structured. And unless you take the time to sew in a lining or anything like that, usually it's going to stretch out within a couple of uses. And I just don't see myself using it very often if that's the case. However, with the Boulevard bag, this is a super structured bag. So Lily Kate, I think, recommends using zip ties and this sort of black trim going around the bag. And she also knits the bag itself at a really tight gauge. So this is going to cause the bag to be a lot more structured and actually to keep its shape. Um, and honestly, ever since I've seen this, I have been obsessed with the black and white version. The texture of this bag and the black trim going around it, it just looks very neat. Okay, and my last recommendation, you guys could not let me get away with the video without giving a sock pattern recommendation. So the only pair of socks that I've really knit for summer are ones that I currently haven't quite finished yet, which is the Midsummer Dancer Socks by Sorry Nerdland, which I mentioned in my Spring Patterns video. Uh, but there are actually lots of more summery sock patterns out there. Um, and I've seen a lot of sock patterns from Summer Lee, which I think are so cool. There, She has a ton of these shorter sock patterns, which I think will work really well for summer and spring and just like less warm seasons. Um, and in particular, I love this pair. It's called the, the Escher Socks. Um, I'm assuming it's inspired by MC Escher. So it has this really cool cube pattern on it. And this one would definitely be a little bit more of a challenge since obviously you have to do Fair Isle. Um, but I just think these look so freaking cool. If I ever knit, wanted to knit a pair of these shorter ankle socks, I think I would definitely want to knit one of Summer Lee's patterns because she just has so many cool like color work socks um, that are designed to be on these shorter ankle socks. So I would definitely recommend checking those or her other patterns out for summer sock patterns. All right, guys, we have come to the end of the video. I know that was a lot of patterns, but I hope that some of these inspired you. I hope that you are, are interested in making some of these for the summer. If so, please comment below what your favorite designs from this video were. Um, I also totally forgot to mention, but I am wearing my heartless top and I've been trying to avoid wearing this because I didn't want people to ask about the pattern because I'm still working on it, but just a heads up, I am still working on it, but please bully me into releasing it sooner because I'm struggling to make myself do it. Um, otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoy this video, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to me. I make new knitting videos every single week, and I plan to make one of these seasonal knitting patterns recommendations videos every single season for the rest of the year. I would definitely appreciate it if you subscribed. Also, give this video a thumbs up just to help me with the algorithm. And I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.